This lesson is going to focus on hybridization and the role that it plays in predicting the shapes of molecules. Hybridization refers to when you have a mixing or a blending of atomic orbitals. So the atomic orbitals are like the S, the P, the D, or even the F orbital. So when the S, P, D, or F orbitals mix or hybridize, think about what hybrid means. It means you're mixing two or more things. They make new molecular orbitals. So the atomic orbitals, orbitals of the atoms that are holding the valence electrons, which those electrons are the ones that are involved in bonding, they mix together in order to make new molecular orbitals. So you make an sp hybrid orbital, or you could say sp1, an sp2 hybrid orbital, or an sp3 hybrid orbital. Now in first year chemistry, we learned about sp, sp2, and sp3 hybridization. We're going to also bring into the mix those expanded octet structures that involve those d orbitals that are holding and accommodating the extra electrons. So dsp3 and d2sp3. Now hybrid orbitals um, are called hybrids because the hybrid orbitals have the same energy. In other words, the s, the p, and the d orbitals, when they're separately, they have different energies. The s orbital is typically at a lower energy than the p atomic orbital, and the p atomic orbital is typically at a lower energy than the d atomic orbital. But when these orbitals come together and hybridize, they make hybrid orbitals with the same energy. So they all get on a level playing field. And we call those orbitals with the same energy degenerate orbitals. Again, hybrid orbitals have the same energy and they're considered degenerate or same energy level orbitals. So if you think about it, hybridization, as I said, it's a mixing. If you were to breed a poodle with a cocker spaniel, you would then have a cockapoo. A cockapoo is a hybrid dog, a hybrid breed of dog. It's a mixing of a poodle and a cocker spaniel. Just like a labradoodle mixes a labrador retriever and a poodle, or a golden doodle is a golden retriever and a poodle. Just like you have hybrid orbitals, you have hybrid animals, you have hybrid cars, there's hybrid plants. So hybridization is not a new concept, but when we apply it to bonding, we're making hybrid bonding orbitals. So with the atomic orbitals, the s orbital we know by itself is spherical. The p orbital we remember is like a peanut shaped orbital. You see here this figure eight. Well, when these s and the p orbitals hybridize, they form an sp hybrid orbital, which takes on similar characteristics of an s and a p. Notice one lobe is bigger than the other, so you have the more spherical end here, the smaller end, and then the larger end here. But the sp hybrid orbital would look still like a figure eight, but not an evenly distrib distributed or symmetrical. So the types of hybrid orbitals that we're going to see are sp, or also known as sp1, which mixes one of your s orbitals and one of the p orbitals. So if you think in terms of just an s orbital, so an s orbital, we said only has one orientation. And when we learned about our p orbitals, we learned they had three separate orientations. So we always drew three boxes for the p orbitals. And then we even learned with the d orbitals, they had five orientations. So remember, each atomic orbital separately can hold up to two electrons per box or per, per orbital. So if you mix 1s and 1p orbital, okay, so that would be if we bring all these together, 
Look at your total boxes we're talking about here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine total boxes, right? All right, so it's kind of like having a total of nine empty rooms. One is from the S orbital. There's a P1, a P2, and a P3. And then there's the D1, D2, D3, D4, and D5 orbital. So those are all the hybrid orbitals if you mix all the degenerate orbitals to make the molecular orbital. So going back to what I was saying, if you mix one S and one P, that's one, two of those little rooms, we call that an SP1. If you mix one S and two of your P orbitals, we call that SP2, so SP1, P2, using three of those degenerate orbitals. If you mix one S and one, two, three of your P orbitals, we call that SP3. And so that would be, if you think in terms of two electrons per orbital, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that would be your normal octet of electrons holding eight for the octet. But when you think in terms of your new parent structures, the trigonal bipyramidal and the octahedral, then you bring into it the other two that we're look at, looking at that are new. So if you bring the S, all three of the P's and one of the D's, we call that a D. SP3. If you mix the S, the three P's, and two of your D's, which is as high as we go, we get a D2 SP3. So the highest hybridization that we will be um, encountering is a D2 SP3, and that would correspond to your octahedral parent structure. All right, so um, hybridization is when you mix your your um, atomic orbitals to make degenerate molecular orbitals and those orbitals are where the valence electrons are sort of like they're living if you want to think of them that way in those little rooms around the central atom as the electrons are being shared. Now when you're trying to figure out hybridization if you were to go look at um, into um, hybridization and the theory of it it does get a little confusing if you if you really get into it and dig down deep but the easiest way to figure out hybridization is just to count how many sides or electron domains I'm going to refer to the electron domains as EDs you're going to see how many electron domains are around the central atom. So if, I, if you see me write ED, that's referring to the electron domains, which are the areas around the central atom or the atom that is in question that um, where electrons are existing or the domains of the electron. So you must first be told which atom to look at, in other words, which atom to find the hybridization of. And then you're gonna count single bonds one time. You're gonna count double bonds as an electron domain. Triple bonds are an electron domain. Lone pairs are considered an electron domain. So single bonds, double bonds, triple bonds, and even lone pairs count as one electron domain. So if you're looking at this first example, I wanted you to give the hybridization of carbon in CH4. So you're going to look at the atom that is, that's in question, in this case carbon, and you're going to see how many electron domains are around the carbon. So we have a single bond here, a single bond here, a single bond here and a single bond here. So let's count the electron domains. One, two, three, four. There are four electron domains. That means we're gonna count to four. And instead of counting one, two, three, four, we're gonna count it out this way. S, P1, P2, P3, D1, D2. That's how we count it out, but when, if you have any Ds that come into play, you, when you say the hybridization of that, the D comes first. So we only have four electron domains here, so we're going to say S, P1, P2, P3. So this is SP3 hybridized around the carbon because it has four electron domains. Let's look at the next examples. So in 
this first example on the UTRI, it says give the hybridization of nitrogen number one. So we're looking up here at nitrogen number one. Let's figure out how many electron domains it has. I'm going to circle them. There's an electron domain here with your lone pair. And there's an electron domain here with your triple bond. So there are two electron domains. So I'll put two electron domains. That means we're counting to two. So SP1 is the hybridization. So SP or SP1. Let's look at example two. It says get the hybridization of carbon number one. So this is carbon number one that I'm pointing to here. So let's figure out how many electron domains are around carbon number one. We have a single bond here, a single bond here, and a double bond here. That's one, two, three electron domains. So we're going to count sp1, p2. That is sp2 hybridized around carbon number one. All right, pause the video and you try three and four on your own. And then once you've done that, resume the video and see how you did. I'm going to go ahead and um, resume with my explanation. So assuming that you've already done this, we're going to look at the hybridization of, of the sulfur here. Well, sulfur has one, two, three, four, five electron domains. Okay. So we're going to count to five. So S, P1, P2, P3, D. So this is D, S, P3. For number four, we got S, P1, P2, P3, D1, D2. This is D2, S, P3. How'd you do? Hopefully you got those right. All right, let's take a look at example five. So here I've given you an organic molecule and we're gonna go um, atom by atom, carbon one, carbon two, oxygen one, and oxygen two. So let's look at carbon one. Carbon one has S, P1, P2, P3. So carbon one is SP3 hybridized. For carbon number two, there's one, two, three electron domains, so sp1, p2 hybridized. Let's look at oxygen number one, which is up top here. There's a double bond here, there's a lone pair here, and a lone pair here. That's one, two, three electron domains, so sp1, p2 hybridized. Let's look at oxygen number two. There's a single bond here, a lone pair, a single bond, and a lone pair. That's four electron domains, so sp1, p2, p3. That is sp3 hybridized. Next, let's look at something called sigma and pi bonds. This is also a new topic that we did not discuss, discuss in Chem 1. But sigma and pi bonds are very important in the, the bonding of these molecules that we're looking at. A sigma bond, and the symbol for sigma, the Greek symbol for sigma, is this, looks kind of like a sideways P if you want to, or maybe a zero or a circle with a little line on the top of it, a sigma. A sigma bond exists in the region directly between two bonded atoms. A pi bond exists in the regions above and below a line drawn between two bonded atoms. Now I'm going to show you what I mean by the, um, the orbital overlap in just a minute on another slide. But for now, what I want you to understand is if you ever have a single bond, so a single covalent bond, so this is what it would look like in your Lewis structure, that is always a sigma bond. The first bond that ever forms is a sigma bond. So single starts with S, Sigma starts with S. Now, if you have a double bond in a Lewis structure, you would draw this. The first bond ever formed is a sigma, so one of those is a sigma, and then the other is a pi. So a double bond consists of one sigma and one pi bond. And then a triple bond consists of a sigma and then two pi bonds. And so a triple bond in the Lewis structure would look like this. So here in hydrogen, diatomic hydrogen, you have just a sigma bond. 
In this structure you have here between the two carbons you have your double bond so one is a sigma and one is a pi and if you were to look at these other exterior carbon to hydrogen bonds they're all single bonds so these are all sigma bonds here sigma 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 and sigma here you have a nitrogen to nitrogen triple bond so there's one sigma and two pi's in a triple bond so let's talk a little bit about how the sigma bond forms so if you have um, hydrogen, two hydrogens bonding, so we just looked at that on the last one, H2. If you have two hydrogens bonding, and you're to think in terms of your um, electron configuration, so this is an S orbital, so this is your 1S, hydrogen will be a 1S1 by itself, and this hydrogen will be a 1S1. So remember, hydrogen wants his duet of electrons, so when they approach each other, they bond and their s orbitals overlap. So here's where they have this orbital overlap. That is what we call a head-to-head -head overlap. This overlap region is where the electrons are shared. Okay, so if this we know from the Lewis structure for hydrogen-hydrogen would be a single bond. So this single bond is, show, is representing the shared pair of electrons here where they're sharing their two electrons to get their duet. So this head-to-head -head overlap is a sigma bond. Sigma bonds are always formed when you have a head-to-head -head overlap. So the only way that s orbitals can overlap is right here, head-on, like they have a head-on crash. This would be where the head-to-head -head overlap would occur. So if you have hydrogen bonding with chlorine, like HCl, if you were to draw the Lewis structure for HCl, it would look like this. I can draw all the dots in here. And there's sort of a delay in my structure drawing here. I'm not really sure why. But anyway, so here, this is where you have your shared pair of electrons. So hydrogen, his electron configuration will be 1s1. And so that will be just your s orbital. And then the chlorine, this is the chlorine p orbital. This is the one that would first come into contact. Here's where it would overlap. This is a head-to-head -head overlap between your s orbital of your hydrogen and one of the p orbitals from chlorine. So this being a head-to-head -head overlap will form just a single bond. And so that would be a sigma bond as well. Now, if you would have chlorine bonding with chlorine, here you have the chlorine p orbital overlapping head-on-head -head with the other chlorine p orbital that's a head-to-head -head overlap that would be a single bond and if you were to draw the Lewis structure for chlorine it would look like this and of course you'd have your electrons around the chlorines oops let me go back So you would have your um, single bond that would form there. So again, sigma bonds are characterized by head-to-head -head overlap. The cylindrical symmetry of the electron density is around the internuclear axis, okay? The internuclear axis would be here, okay? All right, let's look at pi bonds. So pi bonds are characterized by side-by-side -side overlap. Now, so when your orbitals come side by side, when they're parallel to one another, notice this is a side by side overlap. Okay, now the internuclear axis is considered here. Think about your XYZ axis. This is the internuclear axis because this is where the nucleus would be. So notice here that with a pi bond, the electron density, meaning where the electrons are shared, is above and below the internuclear axis. So again, this is a side-by-side -side or a parallel instead of a head-to-head -head overlap. So that's where your pi bonds, parallel, pi. All right, so that will be your pi bond, and that occurs when you have double and triple bonds. So if you were to even think about, um, if you think in terms of your XYZ, if you were to have nitrogen and nitrogen bonding, so let's say this is your, um, Let's try to do it in different colors. So nitrogen would have your p orbitals. So it would be the p orbitals that are overlapping. So I'm going to draw um, your p orbitals here. And then on the 
they, there's your peanut, your your three different P orbitals on the X, Y, and Z axis. And if I change the color of that, and I do another one coming, and I'm going to draw it right here beside it in purple, okay? And so let's say you have here, here, and here would be your Z axis. You will notice that along the x-axis and I'm gonna to try to shade these in a little bit lightly just to kind of finish up here so in green I'll shade the the ones that are your Sigma so this one that is on the x-axis you have your head-to-head -head overlap right here that is your Sigma bond okay so that's the ones that are head-to-head -head, like we saw here on this slide that will be like a head-to-head -head here and then if you um, have your your ones that are parallel bonding so I will try to shade that in with some different colors here so I'll do one sort of a, a light blue so um, the parallel would be this one and this one that are standing up and then you would also have um, the ones that are kind of parallel but on the z-axis so this one that's hard to show you sorry um, I wish my inking tools were working better but um, the side the ones that are on the z-axis would be parallel so the z-axis from each of the atoms they're overlapping parallel here and here if they were to actually get close enough to overlap like you see overlapping in this picture here all right, so that's it for sigma and pi bonds. One last thing I do want to touch on is called bond order. So um, I don't have a separate slide on bond order, but if you would just sort of jot this down, your bond order has to do with your strength of your bond. And so write out the words bond order, but BO is how we're going to, going to abbreviate that. If you have a bond order equal to one, that is a single bond. If you have a bond order equal to two, that is a double bond. And if you have a bond order equal to three, that is a triple bond. If you happen to have a bond order that is like a 1.5, that means you have a resonance structure. Okay, so a bond order of 1.5. I'm going to try to write that over here um, if I can. That would be like a resonance structure. And so we'll talk more about single, double, triple bonds and resonance structures in class. But bond order gives you an indicator of the bond strength. So of course we know that triple bonds are your strongest so the higher the bond order the stronger the bond is the lower the bond order the weaker the bond is so a single bond will have your lowest bond order and that will be your weakest bond a um, triple bond like with nitrogen is going to have the highest bond order that's as high as you can go as a three so that's going to give you a triple bond is your highest bond order strongest bond okay that is it for our lesson on hybridization, sigma and pi bonds, and bond order.